everyone, I'm here with my March wrap up and I read a total of 23 books. I have no idea how I did that. Um, I might have sped read. Okay, well one book was um, an audiobook so that doesn't really count. So I guess I read a total of 22 books. So the first book here is Zero Boxer by Fonda Lee. This is about a boy who wants to become the ultimate fighter and it's set in the future. Um, the city is actually Toronto, which was really fun to read. I love that the setting is actually in a city I know. And I thought this was a very descriptive, wicked kind of, like, futuristic sport. It has, it's basically boxing or, um, ultimate fighting in zero gravity. So it was kind of hard to understand what's going on. But at the same time, she's very descriptive and you get this all-around story that I thought was really interesting and there's a little bit of mystery in it as well. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. Next book is All That Glows by Ryan Groden. She's also the author of The Walled City and this is her, I think this was her debut book. This is about Faze and this is probably my second reading about Faze. Um, I don't know what it is but I don't I think I'm a fan. This was way too much romance for me. It was way too heavy on it. Um, I thought that was the entire focus when I really wanted it to be more about who was trying to overthrow the phase and all that stuff. I gave this one a 2 out of 5. This is Ignite by Sarah B. Larson. This is her sequel to Defy and even though I really like Defy, I didn't like Ignite as much. Uh, it was a little slow. I felt like it was a it suffered second book syndrome. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. This is Etherworld by Claudia Gable and Cheryl Clam. Now, you know, I really enjoy science fiction and this one, oh, so many things happened. I was, I was just blown away. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't stop reading this one even though I like stopped in the middle because I had some other books to read. After that I just had to finish it all the way through. It's a lot more exciting, there's a lot more action, there's also a lot more of a mystery and I thought that would be over but it wasn't. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. This is Last Best Kiss by Claire Lezebnik. And I thought this was a really cute cover and this is probably why I picked it up. I thought it'd be like a really cute contemporary, but lo and behold, I don't know. I was ultimately bored with this one. It's actually a Persuasion by Jane Austen retelling and even though I haven't read that book, um, I'm probably going to have to read Jane Austen's version. This is the modern retelling. But it was just so predictable, and it was so long, and I was really bored. I give this one a 2 out of 5. This is Lover and Trine by J.R. Ward. I don't even know what number book this is. It's probably... I don't even know. There's, she's so ma there's so many books. I find that her books are all of the same formula with a bit of like the one storyline arc that keeps um, moving. But... I don't know, I was kind of like disappointed with this one. As, um, it wasn't as enthralling as the others. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. My Heart and Other Black Holes by Jasmine Wanga. This is a book about mental illness. This is about a girl who is depressed and wants to commit suicide. She goes into this chat room and she, she tries to find someone to off herself with like it's a support group for people who want to commit suicide so she goes and meets this guy and he has a date set and everything and along the way um, things happen and I don't want to spoil anything but I thought it was a really good read in the beginning and then after that it kind of like fell but um, I still really liked it. The writing is really good and I gave this one a 4 out of 5. This is Stones and Finger Bones by Jessica Minyard. This is an indie book I read for a blog tour and this is a fantasy with magic and adventure and all that stuff a about a girl who is trying to save her kingdom. Once something like fatal happens, she has to step up and try to 
you know, become this girl who is essentially a queen. Um, I really liked her writing. It's very, very, like, um, descriptive with the castle and everything and all the characters. I just, I didn't think they were fully developed. I also thought there was a little bit more modern slang in it and I couldn't picture it in, like, the Renaissance area, era. It was, um, it was too modern. I don't know why they were swearing in such a modern fashion, but anyway, it bugged me. But uh, three out of five for this. This is Open Road Summer by Emery Lord, and everyone was hyping this one up last year. I kind of uh, stopped, you know, trying to check out overhyped books, but essentially I decided to read it. And I was disappointed again. But maybe that's just me with contemporaries. I get bored easily. This is a road trip, friendship, uh, romance, I want to say. Um, it's really more about the romance and not really about the friendship, which I wanted it to be. Kind of like Since You've Been Gone by uh, Morgan Madsen. This is more about the romance and I was kind of, yeah, I was bored. Nothing really happens. And main character, she annoyed me to no end. She was super, super judgmental. She would say girls were, you know, skanks and sluts and all this like crazy stuff. I could not understand why. She just had so much hate for females. I gave this one a two out of five. I Was Here by Gail Foreman. This is another new release by Gail. And even though I really liked If I Stay, this one wasn't, I wasn't a big fan. I was not a big fan of this one. It's about a girl who has a best friend who commits suicide and she is trying to deal with it and, you know, trying to move on from it. But at the same time, she finds, like, um, her friend's computer has locked files and she tries to find out what's going on. Did she really commit suicide herself or did someone, you know, push her to it? So she goes on this whole, like, I don't know. Coming, it's like a journey to find herself and and her best friend and all that. But I didn't find that. I thought it was more of a romance again, and it was the most inappropriate relationship I've read in a book. I thought it was it was just so unnecessary, and it shouldn't be. It should have been more about the friendship and not about the romance. I was really disappointed. I wanted to give this a one, but the writing isn't abysmal, so I gave it a two out of five. This is Liars Inc. by Paula Stokes, and I love this one. This is a mystery thriller um, that I could not stop reading, and when I say I couldn't stop reading, I read it in one sitting and stayed up till 2.30 in the morning to finish it because I wanted to know what happened in the end. It, I can't say much about the storyline, I just can say it's about a guy who finds his best friend missing and his girlfriend is, yeah, I didn't really like his girlfriend, but I love this book. I thought it was excellent. Go check it out. I hope you guys like it. And now on to the physical books. I have Love in the Time of Global Warming by Francesca Leah Block. This is one of my favorite covers ever. It's just gorgeous. This is about um, the end of the world and she is basically trying to survive. It is a survival story. But at the same time, when I read the description, it's actually a retelling of Ulysses. And I don't actually know what that is about because I haven't read it. But if it's anything like this book, I think I would enjoy it. There's a lot of like craziness in it. There's like monsters. And I thought it was just a kind of different twist to post-apocalyptic books. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. This is one book I knew that I had to read. I dropped everything that I was reading just to read it. This is Finding Andre by Sophie Kinsella. And it was really weird to uh, read a book where Sophie is touching upon something like serious, more serious than her comedic tone. This is about a girl who is trying to deal with her social anxiety. and. There's this boy who is her brother's best friend who comes over and changes all that. It's a cute little story. It's I feel like it's a bit more middle grade-ish or tween. Um, 
because the characters are a lot younger sounding as well but I still loved the family they were just hilarious it has Sophie's you know comedic tone and I gave this one a four out of five this is the audiobook that I had to listen to I actually ended up reading like half of this but people were saying that Mindy narrated the audiobook and I love her voice she's just so funny this book is hilarious it's just like little uh, stories about her life and how she became um, a writer for the office and how you know she started on that journey I thought it is so funny she's hilarious there's also pictures of her in it uh, some of them are I don't know they're just like random ones so it's just so funny I recommend listening to the audiobook but the book is also a good feature because there's pictures in it as well I gave this one a 4 out of 5. Bear to You by Sylvia Day. This is the book that was being compared to Fifty Shades of Grey and I wish I kind of read this one first because it really is similar to Fifty Shades of Grey but it actually has kind of a story and the writing is loads better than E.L. James. I'm sorry. Um, this kind of reminded me of uh, what's his name? Oh, Henry Cavill from like The Man of Steel. He, the character in it is just him, like the way he looks. I don't know if that's how he, he really is because this guy is kind of like, I don't know, very possessive and stuff, but um, I found it to be another cliche romance, you know, girl meets boy, blah blah blah, he's rich, blah blah blah, you know, it's just has a lot of sexy times in it, um, I do have to warn you. I enjoyed it, some bits of it, uh, some bits I'm just like, okay, no. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. This is Skinny by Iba Kalkasilik? Kasilik? I can't. Oh. Anyway, um, the reason why I wanted to read this was because the girl in this book, her name is my name, and that actually hardly ever happens to me because the spelling is always just like one L or whatever. But um, it's about two sisters who are on like different paths. One is um, basically self-destructive. She She's just, you know, the troubled teen. And then there's um, the other one who is a medical student trying to become a doctor and it's, it just goes dual point of views and one of them is anorexic so it's kind of hard to read those parts but at the same time um i was a little bored there is not much of a story in it um i think i gave this one a two or a three i guess i was on some sort of like romance kick because i started this one this is one tiny lie by k.a tucker um this one i really enjoyed even though some of the the decisions, actually most of the decisions that she makes in this book was insane. This is um, Livy's story. This is the younger sister of the other character in the first book. I thought she was going to be like, oh, you know, I'm not going to do all this crazy stuff. But no, she does all of the things that you're not supposed to. And I can understand why because she's always, you know, deemed as so perfect. She does like she messes everything up in this one and it was kind of hard to read but at the same time it was entertaining um i thought it was really good um it was it was very cliche as always but um i thought it was cute they had chemistry i gave this one a four out of five the sin eater's daughter by melinda salisbury what can i say about this one um, it should have been titled something else. It really didn't have much of the sin eating as much as I hoped it would be. I thought it would have been better from the villain's point of view because she is kind of insane. The the queen who is a villain is just, oh, she's very, very evil. And I thought it would have been more interesting to read about that one. I was very bored with this one. Um, I know lots of people DNF'd it, and I wanted to, but I just kept going anyway. Um, I don't know if I give this one a 2 or a 3. I think it was a 3 because the writing is very good. It's just, there was no story. Like, it just appeared in the end, and I 
I wanted more from it. A Great and Terrible Beauty by Lebo Bray. This is a historical fiction novel and I didn't know what to expect about it. I do really like boarding school books. Libba takes a long, 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 long time to set stories up and I found it in this one, but I was still entertained enough. I didn't even feel like dropping it, but the thing is, I know what she's doing. Like She's always setting up the characters and everything and it takes a long time, but I really liked it. I still gave it a go. This is um, the first book out of the trilogy and I'm going to read the second one, which I hear that is way more... Um, engaging than this one. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. I read Half Bad by Sally Green. I wanted to read Half Wild before March ended, but that didn't happen. Um, this was an interesting take on witches and shapeshifters and all the like. Um, I thought it was a little dry. I don't know. It was kind of boring. There's just, there's just a lot of like everyday things and there wasn't too much of a plot like I just trying to find a plot that's my problem with some books it gets just so dragged out and oh I just get really bored this is a three out of five control by Lydia Kang I really like this one I mean I was surprised at how much I liked it it is a science fiction novel about a girl who has a father for a science as a scientist and he actually creates these kind of mutations and people and you know all that stuff happens and she tries to escape the people who are trying to find her and it's it's like a chase and you know running and chasing kind of novel and I love those so um I thought it was a really good there's not a lot of revelations but it was very engaging I like the side character secondary characters they were really really funny I gave this one a four out of five and then the sequel, Catalyst by Lydia Kang, they cha they did a cover change. I like this one as well. It shows more of the world that they are in and more of the surroundings of the world. Um, some points, they were a little dry, but I guess there was more of the mystery trying to be um, un like solved. Uh, the characters are trying to find a safe haven, and I just thought it was it was just good it was it's a very uh dynamic kind of book and i give this one a four out of five last but not least oh my god my voice is kind of scratchy <coughs> excuse me this is boundless by cynthia hand and uh, this is the book i kind of kept off from reading because it's the last one i wanted to know how everything ends between oh gosh i forgot their names clara and Tucker and Christian and all the like there's a huge love triangle in this one but I was always gunning for just the pair and yeah it was it was a good ending it's it gave me like a smile at the end of when I finished it so it it was yeah it's a cute little romance slash like angel story I gave this one either a three was it a three or a four I think it was a four I don't remember, but I just love her writing. Cynthia's writing is just, it's just so oh, beautiful. And that is it for me. I hope I have a better month. I want to try to read like 30 books in one month. I want to see if I can do that. Until next time, bye book nerds.